Why is it that Brook is a devil fruit user that can walk on water while carrying a person? Ever notice how Brook never actually reached the destination Kuma sent him to? Instead, he got intercepted by that summoning circle. Why did it take Brook a whole year to return to his body, when usually the effects of devil fruits are pretty instant? Is it possible Brook's soul is in the wrong body? You're back with Denden Kushi on another episode of OPM, or One Piece Mysteries if you want the full title. Now, once you've returned from the underworld, hit the sub button and let's get into it. Amidst the mysteries of the Grand Line, the enigmatic nature of Devil Fruits, and the countless secrets of the One Piece world, there lies an interesting possibility that Brook's soul may have returned to the wrong body. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Brook is a mysterious character, and no one really seems to recognize or connect to him throughout the story, and he's particularly withdrawn when it comes to information about the path. For example, we see a ton of ellipses when he hears people say spicy stuff, the most prominent of which is probably when the name Binsmoke is mentioned. While it's widely known that the Yomi Yomi Nomi allowed Brook's soul to return to the living world after his body perished, today we look at whether another consciousness might have found refuge within his revived body and try find out if the Soul King really is Brook. It's possible that another entity, whether it be a spirit, a remnant will, or even a fragment of a lost soul, latched onto his body during its time adrift the One Piece oceans. After all, fruits can have a will of their own, right? And we did see something similar between Ryuma and Brook, let's not forget, so maybe the will of the Yomi returned to Brook's body instead of Brook's will, or even in addition to Brook's will. Not only that, but the Underworld seems to be an ever-present theme in the story, with Saturn's recent satanic ties and the countless previous references to hell. Furthermore, the Yomi Yomi Nomi translated actually means underworld fruit. We can find more strangeness in Brook's behaviour, along with some unexplained actions, such as his occasional moments of uncharacteristic seriousness or unexpected skills that he himself doesn't recall acquiring, suggesting these skills might be attributed to some other mysterious presence, influencing or guiding Brook. This may be the reason why there's no reference to panties while Brook's alive. Frankie even questioned Brook on how he stayed sane while being on his own for so long, so maybe Brook wasn't alone after all. Maybe he was accompanied by another will. Brook is a musician, and not just any musician, but one of the most famous in the world of One Piece. Music in the One Piece world has mystical properties that affect Will, from the drums of liberation to Apu's strange devil fruit ability. That's weird. In his cover story, Brook reached global audience with his sound. Could it be that Brook's popularity and music was influenced by this other soul? Maybe this is where Brook got his name Soul King from originally, reminiscent of Zoro's ties to the King of Hell. Additionally, sound and music can be used to guide souls of the dead, for example with the Bell of Shandora. This is actually quite similar to how Devil Fruits reincarnate too, but I'll cover that another time. It also ties deeply into what is probably Brook's most distinctive character trait. I'm referring to Brook's solid connection to the ferryman of the River Styx, commonly known as Sharon. This is a character you've likely seen in media before and is most often depicted as a skeleton on a small boat, trafficking souls from the land of the living to the realm of the dead. The word Brook actually means river, and the ferryman himself is said to be an old man that carries souls across a river that lies between these two places, much like we see with Brook's fruit. It's customary to pay the ferryman a coin, and in Virgil's epic poem, The Aeneid, the dead who could not pay the fee had to wander near the shores of the Styx for 100 years before they were allowed to cross the river. This runs eerily close to Brook not being able to find his body for an entire year and may help us in solving why it took him so long. The theme of paying a coin is only really shared by the Davy backfight in One Piece as far as I could find, but if you have any other ideas do please let me know in the comments. In the Davy backfight we see players sacrifice three coins before starting the game as an offering to Davy Jones. Fascinatingly, Davy Jones was also tasked with ferrying the dead, so there very well might be a connection between Brook and the Davy backfight still to be revealed. An additional hint may be the fact that Luffy had an afro during the Davy backfight, something which Brook donned. Considering how keratin, such as in Hair and Nails, appears to be capable of sending and receiving signals in the One Piece world, it could be possible Brook's afro acts as some sort of antenna, as discussed by Dak and myself in countless videos at this point, suggesting this added to the reason why Brook was intercepted 
deserted after being pawpawed by Kuma at Sabaody. Brooke also recently mentioned an afro when seeing Bonnie trapped in the eddy before Egghead, so the theme is pretty relevant. Anywho, back to the theory. In Wano, Luffy was revealed to have the Sun God fruit, accompanied by information from the Gorosei stating some fruits have a will of their own, and that their names aren't always what we think. Perhaps the will of the Yom Yomi, or the will of the original owner of the Yomi fruit, is inside our favourite musical straw hat. It is definitely possible for previous users to connect through their fruits, as we saw with Luffy and Joy Boy. Three Day Trip and myself recently posted a video about the Emerald City, and the fact will is often portrayed using the color green. Think like Green Lantern, for example. It's possible that if Brooke does house another ego inside him, the presence could be what we saw when the green spirit comes out of Brooke. Big Mum is the Soul King, and she has a similar looking spirit coming out of her, which she calls Misery. So the users of the two soul fruits both have some strange spirit or Klebautaman type thing that comes out of them, and it affects its surroundings, both of which are green as well. A potential candidate for the will that inhabits Brooke's body is the Soul King, as I mentioned earlier. Soul King is Brooke's epithet, but we also see Oda giving Brooke a crown almost every chance he can. I mean, do we really think it's coincidence that the Soul King Brooke and the Soul Queen Big Mum ended up sleeping in bed together? and they also clashed again in Wano. In Egghead, we saw Saturn pop out of a summoning circle. Brook was potentially intercepted by a summoning circle when Kuma sent him away for the time skip during Sabaody, as opposed to Kuma intending to send Brook to Nakamura Island. Oh, actually, Did you mean to do that? Yeah. It also means Kuma didn't simply send Brook to an island for some panty. With that said, tell me in the comments where you think Brook was being sent originally by Kuma before he got pulled onto Nakamura Island, because in complete honesty, I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. I've actually looked and I don't, I don't have a clue. So um, if you have any idea, let me know and maybe I'll bring it up in another video. Later on in this cover story, Brooke was essentially hijacked and taken on tour where he became a world famous musician. Now, seeing as Brooke wasn't supposed to land on Nakamura, it follows that his journey thereafter was unintended and it just kind of happened to him. This is again, reminiscent of the idea that some fruits have a will of their own. So if all of this is true, the idea sparks curiosity about the potential implications of the additional consciousness residing within Brooke. It raises questions about its origins, character interactions, and how it might affect Brooke's journey as a straw hat pirate. Whether this will be explored or revealed in the series remains a captivating mystery, adding another layer of depth to the story of the Soul King. After all, we saw him smile before he died, so there must be more to this Skelechad. Now, before I sign off, here's a real quick bit of food for four. Brook is the Soul King. Zoro is clearly connected to Brook through the underworld theme, for example with Ice, and is given the name King of Hell. In short, it might be the case that we see Luffy's lifespan issues catch up to him, and the Straw Hats need to retrieve their captain from Hell. This would make use of Zoro and Brook's time as the Grim Reaper and Ferryman. Anyway, if you've made it this far, you've just won free tickets to Brooke's next concert, so let us know in the comments where you want them delivered. Um, this has been Denden Kushi and the crew, and you have been great as always. Peace, peace, much love, and bye.